Question one, complete these sentences to describe the process of refraction. Refraction is when light enters a glass block and changes direction. And the reason it changes direction is because the speed changes. This results in a change in something else. However, the blank cannot change. Well, we know that the frequency cannot change. Frequency is the colour of visible light. And if you shine a red beam of light through a glass block, it doesn't change colour because of that. So it's the frequency cannot change. Uh, we know that there are three things related, frequency, speed and wavelength. So it's the wavelength that does change. The next part of this question gives us some data on some lenses. It tells us the diameter of five lenses and the focal length of a lens. Remember that the focal length is the distance from the lens to the focal point. And that focal length is inversely proportional to the power of a lens. So a thick, powerful lens will have a short focal length, a thin, less powerful lens will have a long focal length. So these two lenses would be the best to use a telescope. Well, the objective lens, the purpose of an objective lens is to form an image. You want a very long focal length that will allow that to take place. So we want the longest focal length. Here we have lens B and lens C. Both have focal lengths of 1,000 millimetres. So which one do we choose? Well, if we look at the diameter of the two lenses, you'll see that lens B has a bigger diameter. That means it will capture more light and it should be able to form a better image. So lens B will make the best objective lens. Now for the eyepiece lens, you want a powerful lens with a very short focal length in order to best magnify the image that's been formed by the objective lens. So for our eyepiece lens, we need to choose the shortest focal length. In this case, that would be lens D. Part two asks us to calculate the magnification of a telescope made using the lenses that we've just chosen in part one. If we look at our formula sheet, you'll find the equation here for magnification is the focal length of the objective lens divided by the focal length of the eyepiece lens. So the focal length of our objective lens here, that's the focal length of our objective lens here, that's lens B is 1000 millimeters and the focal length of our eyepiece lens is 20 1000 divided by 20 is 50 times so we have a magnification of 50 times and the final part two lenses have exactly the same size and shape so just how they can have different focal lengths uh, well there's a few answers you could have here but Easiest one, I would say, is to say that they are made of uh, different materials. Part D. One problem with using a lens is that light of different wavelengths will produce a spectrum. Explain how the edge of a lens can produce a spectrum. So it says to use a diagram to help you explain, and that's probably the easiest way of answering this question. So if we imagine our lens looks like this in cross-section, then one edge of it is something like that, which is a very similar shape to a prism, which means that our white light comes towards the prism. And as it passes through, it is refracted. And different frequencies... by different amounts so the red light would bend by less and come out here whereas the blue light will bend more and come through here so this acts like a prism Part A, explain why the aperture of a radio telescope must be much larger 
the aperture of an optical telescope. This question is related to diffraction. Diffraction occurs when a wave passes through a gap and spreads out. Now, you get maximum diffraction and gap size is equal to the wavelength of the wave that's approaching it. Radio waves have long wavelengths, much, much longer than visible light. Visible light, you've measured the wavelengths in uh, nanometers, whereas radio waves you could measure in centimeters or even meters or kilometers. So therefore, we need large apertures to minimize diffraction.